All right, and welcome to this special episode of Real Estate Fight Club. This series is called What Would You Do? airs every Wednesday. And we talk about um, ethics violations, professional standards violations. And here with me today is Jim Camarada from Keller Williams in Minnesota. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jen. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing just fine. It's a beautiful day here in Minnesota. Minnesota. It hasn't snowed yet. Almost. I'm sure it will soon. (laughs) So we wanted to talk today about, we've been talking about like, obviously this is like a professional standards and committee violations, but like, are there really consequences? So you pulled some resources for us Mm -hmm. to see, because we all know by now there's no real realtor jail. Don't tell my agents that. I'm telling everyone. I'm <laughs> screaming it from the mountaintops, but there are real consequences. There so are. what do you, what did you find for us? Okay. Um, I think it really, we have to back up a little bit. Uh, okay. When somebody applies for a real estate license in Minnesota, mm-hmm. uh, there are a series of questions that the Department of Commerce requires uh, the applicant to, uh, to answer honestly. And if there <laughs> is... <laughs> Because uh, all criminals are honest. What are yeah. some of the questions? Well, number six is, do you have a child support obligation in arrears? So it's yes or no. And, you know, that has uh, some implications about your, your character or your finances. Okay. Um, but I like number one, uh, have you ever been convicted of a crime, had a judgment withheld or deferred, or have you been charged with committing a crime? This could block the application from going f- through. So the Department of Commerce is vetting us and trying to eliminate um, uh, some possible misbehavior even before. Uh, yeah, that's it gets interesting. In. We have um, so I'm licensed in two states, and in one of my states, we had to get literal like FBI background fingerprints. Mm-hmm. And in my other state, we had to check a box that we weren't a criminal. Yeah. That was it. I was like, we're checking a box. If you're a criminal, you're going to be like, yeah, I'm not a criminal. It's all good. Well, to get a license to uh, go door knocking in most of the municipalities around here, you have to have a license. And they do run a police background check on you. They do. You're right. They do that here because we got in trouble door knocking one time. Me and um, my friend, Tressa Ellis. Hey, Tressa. We were door knocking in a neighborhood. And um, I mean, we've been door knocking so many times. That's how I started my business. And this guy came chasing after us. He's like, we're going to call the police. And I was like, okay, like, relax. We're just real estate agents. Like, we're not soliciting, but we had to get, like, a solicitor's license. Yeah, and you've got to wear the around your neck. Yeah, and get, like, the, or the courthouse or whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah. So the the Department of Commerce tries to weed out uh, potential uh, bad behavior. Okay. Now, we're all human. We will make mistakes. We will violate a code of ethics even unknowingly. Yes. Uh, And in our state and in our association, uh, they've put together a citation schedule. Okay. So that if if you are charged with uh, violating a particular code, um, you can just not contest it. And yeah, I did it. Give me the fine. fine. I don't want to go through all the drama. All right. Give us an example of a couple of those. Like what are the fines? and is this like, I know before we had talked about like, if, is this only first time or is this like? No, there's a first defense, there's a second defense and there's a third defense. Okay, let's hear it. If, if you do not contest it and go before the hearing committee. Okay. So providing access to listed property on terms other than as those established by the owner or the, uh, the listing broker. So it could be up to a thousand dollar fine plus three hours of continuing ed. That would be where like you're the buyer agent and you gave your buyer the code or something like that. Yeah. Or you went in without an appointment. Right. Yeah. There there are still agents who use combo boxes and some agents use the same combo for all of their listings. Yeah. And I've known agents to, you know, oh yeah, that one's, uh, you know, 30, 30 and, and go in and without permission and well so there was there was one time and it, i went to the wrong house 
And I couldn't, and I remember it was like a super lockbox. And I was surprised, like when I realized it was the wrong house that it let me in. But cause I thought those would be more like it would match like your appointment with the time or something like that. But it was like a total accident. They literally like looked the same on the outside. And you know, I've told you the story about how I got lost in a cul-de-sac anyway. So it's like, I have trouble with houses that look the same. This is why I'm a listing agent. And I get in the house and I was like, this doesn't look anything like the pictures. And I'm looking and thinking and looking and thinking. And it was like two numbers were like just inverted or something like that. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh shit, we're in the wrong house. (laughs) How did it let us in? Anyway, I didn't yeah. get in trouble, but. But anyway, unauthorized access. Unauthorized, that would have been me. So up to $1,000, okay. Yeah, for the first offense and three hours of uh, continuing ed. Mm-hmm. Uh, a second offense is. That really uh, should be in my case. It, the continuing ed wouldn't have helped. Maybe like math yeah. or learn, reading, literacy or, you know what I mean? <laughs> But for a third offense, it could be up to a twenty-two fifty fine plus six hours of continuing it. I mean, okay. So it's not what, very like. I mean, if you're doing it over and over, and you've only been if you've been caught three times, you've probably done it four hundred times. And how much commission have you received? At yeah. twenty-two hundred bucks for a third offense seems very light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now might be a good time to take your break. Okay. <laughs> Let's we can move on to some new. We mis- need a break. Yeah. I need a I need a shot, Jim. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm coming. All right. I want to tell you about two of our sponsors. Who should we talk about today? I think um my first one and one of my favorites is my coach, John Kitchens. So what he's offering our listeners is a free 30-minute business assessment. And this is really good because you don't know what you don't know. So it's worth having somebody kind of look at from the outside and see how they can help you grow your business. So you would go to callcoachkitchens.com and enter in Fight Club and you'll get that for free. And then the other is realsupportsolutions.com. They do um, training. So they do continuing some continuing ed too, some training. They do transaction coordination, administrative help, website development, stuff like that. And if you go to realsupportsolutions.com, enter code fight club, you'll get a hundred dollars off or you'll get three free hours of training. So those are good ones. Okay. Okay. And speaking of continuing it, uh, NAR has a requirement. We have to complete our code of ethics training by the end of the year. Okay. Reminder. Thank you. All right. Well, let me end on a real positive note. Oh no, this is not going to be positive at all. What is it? Okay. If if you are really committing some serious crimes and, and offenses. Yeah, stop uh, it. Our, our uh, code here says that you could be fined f- up to $15,000. Okay. You could have your uh, license and membership suspended for up to six months or any combination. And you could also end up with the uh, termination of your uh, uh, board membership for up to three years. But if they just terminated your board membership, that just means that you're not a capital R realtor. You're a real estate agent. Yeah, that's part of it. But it also means that you have no access whatsoever to Supra or to MLS. Uh, You're essentially out of business because you can't access any of the information. Interesting. And this is like part of the discussion too with the DOJ, right? The Department of Justice. Yeah, you don't want the Department of Justice on your case. Uh, (laughs) No. Oh yeah, I I learned of a situation not too long ago where this individual uh, was was using drugs. Uh Uh-oh. And got caught and was put on probation. Mm -hmm. Um, Drugs while we're like at their house or like at a showing or okay just in general i'm not sure of all the details okay Uh, but then he violated his uh probation by not only continuing to use drugs but also to sell them oh so he was a drug dealer he got put in jail for two years and his license was taken away terminated 
And as far as I know, uh, the Department of Commerce uh, here in the state is not going to reinstate him uh, anytime soon. So, yeah. I mean, this, the consequences are, are very, very serious. So that was his primary uh, source of income other, other than selling the drugs. Drug. He wasn't a very good drug dealer then. <laughs> yeah. but, um, yeah. It's interesting though, because there is this like, I don't know how to say it, but it's basically like there's realtors in every market where you're like, you're, they're an eye roll, right? They're like, oh my God. Cause you know, they're like constantly violating the code of ethics, but they never get in trouble because nobody ever tells. And it's like, how, I don't know. What do you think about that? Cause you know, think- like looking, listening to these fines and stuff, it's like, they should get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's why some of these fines have been upped considerably, uh, like out in California. I've heard of uh, some stories where, you know, they'd get slapped with a $5,000 fine and that was petty cash to them. Right. So, you know, they would triple it, you know, let's, right. let's give you because they impact. realized by the time somebody told they had done it a number of times, it's like getting a speeding ticket, right? Like I never get angry that I get a speeding ticket. Cause it's like the amount of times that I've speeded. And this is like, I mean, Come on, you know. That's why you have cruise control. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, true, but I like driving fast. Yeah, I know. Me, me too. Yeah. But, well, but, we really yeah, appreciate totally. you being on, Jim. This is like, it's so interesting to find out what they really are. Like, do you really get in trouble, you know? And yeah. if um, people have a referral for you in Minnesota, if they have a question, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, you can text or call at 612 612- Five six two seven four six one, or email me at jimcamarada at kw.com. Perfect. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thank you. Yeah.